Hi, and welcome to lesson 4.1. So today we are going to learn a lot about triangles, and specifically we're going to learn about some triangle sum properties. So first we're going to go and talk about classifying triangles, and these should be very familiar with you. So the first type of triangle that we have is a scaling triangle. This is a triangle who does not have any congruent sides, so all of our sides are going to be different lengths. We cannot mark them as congruent. So example, this could be like 5, this could have a length of 12, and this could have a length of 13. They are all different. Our next type of triangle is an isosceles triangle. And by definition, according to the book, they say it's a triangle that has at least two congruent sides. So we could have maybe 5, 5, and 4 right here. So it's at least two congruent sides. However, we're most familiar with just saying that an isosceles triangle has two congruent sides. Our next type of triangle, which is an equilateral triangle, has all three sides being congruent. They are all the same exact length. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Now we're going to classify triangles by their angles. So an acute triangle is just that. It's a triangle that has three acute angles. All three angles are going to be less than 90 degrees. A right triangle is a triangle that has exactly one right angle, and we'll mark that with a box, showing that these two sides are perpendicular to each other. An obtuse triangle is exactly one obtuse angle, so greater than 90 degrees. And an equal angular triangle has all three angles are congruent. And in fact, if a triangle is equal angular, it is also equilateral. All three sides are also congruent. Okay, so that's how we can classify triangles by their sides and by their angles. Now we're going to learn how we can put this into use and how we're going to figure out what type of triangle it is right here. So we have triangle ABC drawn on our diagram. We want to figure out what type of triangle it is and then we're going to by its side. So is it scaling, is it equilateral, or is it isosceles? And then we're going to figure out is it in fact a right triangle. So the way that we do this is we need to find the length of each segment. So we're going to use our distance formula. So we're going to first go with this side right here. So we have our distance equals the square root of 0 minus a negative 5 squared plus 2 minus 4 squared. So this gives us the square root of 25 plus 4, which is the square root of 29. Okay, our next side. We've got our length equals the square root of 0 minus a negative 2 plus 2 minus a negative 3. Sorry, that's a 3 right there. Okay, so that gives us the square root of 4 plus 25, which is the square root of 29. Okay, so right now it looks like we might have an isosceles triangle, but we need to find the length of that last segment. So our distance here is going to be negative 5 minus negative 2 squared plus 4 minus a negative 3 squared. Okay, so now we have 9 plus 49, which is the square root of 58. Okay, so we definitely know that we have an isosceles triangle. These two sides right here are congruent to each other. They both are the square root of 29. So we know from the sides it's an isosceles. Now we're going to figure out if it's the right triangle, and we're going to do that by using our Pythagorean theorem. So we have the square root of 29 squared plus the square root of 29 squared. Does that equal the square root of 58 squared? And in fact, we get 29 plus 29, and that does equal 58. 
So yes, it's an isosceles right triangle. Okay, let's move on to the next slide here. So now we have a couple of theorems. And these theorems we're going to be using throughout the year. So our first theorem is the triangle sum theorem, which says that the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So no matter what type of triangle we have, isosceles, scalene, right triangle, acute triangle, obtuse triangle, the three angles will always add up to 180 degrees. Every single triangle, the sum of the interior angles is 180. Now this next one is probably a new theorem for you. Exterior angle theorem. This states that the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of the two non-adjacent interior angles. Okay, that's a lot of words right there. First of all, let's figure out what we've got. So we have a triangle. There's our triangle. We're talking about an exterior angle, which means that if we were to carry out this side length, right here, angle one would be an exterior angle. And we're gonna have angle two and angle three over here. What this theorem says is that the measure of angle one equals the sum of the two non-adjacent interior angles. So that would be the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three. It equals the two angles, it's opposite. So not this one right here, but these other two angles. And that is true for any exterior angle. Let's say we carried out this line right here and put a four right here and a five. The measure of angle four equals the measure, the two non-adjacent, that's gonna be two and five in this case. Measure of angle two plus the measure of angle five. Okay, so let's put this exterior angle theorem to use here and let's see how we can apply our knowledge. So we have an exterior angle right here that has a measure of three X plus six. And we see the two interior angles that are non-adjacent. This would have been our adjacent side. So what that means is we're going to set this equal three X plus six equals 80 plus X. Because our theorem says that our exterior angle equals the sum of the two interior non-adjacent angles. So now we're just gonna combine like terms. So moving this X over and moving the six over, we get two X equals 74. So X equals 37. So if X equals 37, we can now find the measure of angle D, E, F, which is this exterior angle. And that's just going to be three times 37 plus six, or we could also just do 80 plus 37 because we know that it equals the sum of these two as well. But let's go ahead and plug X in. So we have three, so the measure of angle DEF equals three times 37 plus six. So that gives us 111 plus six, which is 117 degrees. So the measure of angle DEF is 117 degrees, and that's how one way that you can use this theorem. Okay, now we're gonna move on to a corollary. Corollary is a new term for you, but a corollary is a statement that can be proved easily using a theorem. It's kind of like a mini theorem. So we have a corollary to the triangle sum theorem, and remember our triangle sum theorem said that all of the interior angles of a triangle will add up to 180. So the acute angles of a right triangle are complementary. And let's take a look at that. So we have a right triangle. We know that one of those angles is 90 degrees. So angle one and angle two are our two other angles. So for our triangle, we have the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two plus 90 degrees, because it's a right triangle, equals 180. If we move that 90 over, we have the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 90. And that is definition of complementary angles, two angles whose sum is 90 degrees. So we have just proven the triangle sum theorem, the corollary to the triangle sum theorem. Okay, one last example. So we have the following kind of triangle within a triangle, and we need to find the values of x and y. 
we can see that we've got a right triangle right here. But we need to find the values of x and y. We don't know what those are, but we have two measures of this other triangle right here. So we have a third or a second triangle right there. We know two of its measures. So we can find our third measure because we know that all of the interior angles of a triangle add up to 180. So if we take 180 and subtract 47 and 15 from it, we will get our third angle of that triangle. And we see that this is 118 degrees. Okay, so now we can use our exterior angle theorem to solve for y. We already have one of the angles that's not adjacent to 118, because 118 now, this is exterior to this triangle. So we have 118 equals 90 plus y. Therefore, y equals 28 degrees. And if y equals 28 degrees, we know that x has got to be complementary to y. So we take 90 minus 28 to get x, and x equals 62 degrees. And we found the values of x and y. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a good one. Bye-bye.